Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023 edition of the Sands and Stormsters Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier ran into another one of these sort of customized branded uh, phishing pages. The trick here is that the phishing page is automatically adjusted based on the email address being entered into the page. So typically here, the user will receive an email, a message with a link uh, that leads to the phishing page. The link itself includes as a parameter the email address of the victim. And then JavaScript on the page is loading a screenshot of a web page based on the victim's email domain. So if you're, for example, entering a sans.edu email, it will automatically pull in a screenshot of the sans.edu website, use it as a background, and with that, make the entire phishing page more plausible. The trick how this works with only client side and JavaScript code is a service called thumb.io. It essentially creates screenshots of random web pages and easily integrates with JavaScript. So there is no server side code required for this, which of course makes it very easy and simple to host respective phishing pages. I believe he had a page like this also last year. Xavier also explains how to deobfuscate some of the JavaScript being used in this site. And earlier this week, I talked about Fortinet fixing 40 or something like this vulnerabilities, one of them a critical vulnerability in 40 NAC uh, CVE 2022-39952. Well, as promised, uh, Horizon 3 now released a deep dive into this vulnerability, including a proof of concept exploit. To make things more interesting, exploitation is pretty straightforward of the vulnerability. As part of the patch, a file was removed from Fortinac that allowed upload of key files, uh, but these key files were then immediately unzipped uh, without any further inspection, which, well, uh, then can lead to simple remote code execution, as explained in more detail in the Horizon 3 advisory. Exploit attempts have apparently already been observed according uh, to some tweets from various security companies. Uh, haven't seen any of them uh, myself yet, but uh, have also not had a chance to really put up a good emulation of a Fortinac device. And we got a new update for the Apache Commons file upload library. It's just a denial of service, uh, but I think it's still worth mentioning because it does uh, affect a large number of uh, software that will also receive respective updates. Uh, Tomcat, uh, for example, also includes Apache Commons file upload. It's one of those libraries that you see all over the place. It's actually a relatively simple issue also in the sense that by default, uh, this library does not limit how many files uh, you can upload with one request. And that's something that you should configure anyway. There are a number of parameters here that you can configure with Apache Commons file upload, like how many files, maximum file sizes and the like. These are definitely parameters that you uh, should set to some reasonable values when you're using uh, this library. And if you had issues with your Windows Server 2022 VMs after the last Microsoft update, there is now an emergency update for VMware ESXi available that will fix the problem and allow you to boot these systems again without problems. The issue here appears to be due to some additional checks that Microsoft implemented in order to make sure that the UFI secure boot is uh, properly signed and apparently uh, there was sort of an incorrect rejection for how uh, VMware ESXi sort of sets up uh, the UEFI uh, boot. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks and for listening. If you like the podcast, please tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell your pets and uh, thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.